Hi, I'm Brian Bankson of the Cinco Ranch Branch Library, and welcome to a special Black History Month episode of What Makes This Photograph Great, where we analyze point by point, element by element, pixel by pixel what makes a photograph worth looking at. Each episode I'll be choosing a master photographer and focusing on a particular photograph from their repertoire that I really dig. Today we're going to look at prominent African-American photographer and filmmaker Gordon Parks. Let's start with a little background on Mr. Parks. He was born in 1912 in Kansas, the youngest of 15 children. His father was a farmer. He attended a segregated school until the age of 14 when his mother passed away and he was sent to St. Paul to live with his sister and her husband. He lived there until the stock market crashed and he jumped train to Chicago where he landed a job at a flop house. Gordon bought his first camera at the age of 25. After receiving praise for his photographs from the wife of famed boxer Joe Lewis, Gordon started a portrait business, mainly photographing fashion models and society women, while continuing also to document the poverty in African-American neighborhoods in Chicago. It was these latter photographs which led him to being hired by the Farm Security Administration, a New Deal program that hired photographers to document life during the Depression. Later, he would work for Life magazine, where he made portraits of people like Malcolm X, Stokely Carmichael, and Muhammad Ali. Aside from photography, Gordon made his mark as the first African-American filmmaker directing the movie Shaft in 1971. And somehow he also found the time to be a musician and composer, write 15 books, paint, and co-found Essence magazine. Man, this was one accomplished guy. So, let's now look at the photograph I have selected to analyze. It is called American Gothic and was taken in 1942 while Parks worked for the Farm Security Administration. The subject of this portrait was a cleaning woman named Ella Watson who worked in a government building in Washington, D.C. As usual, let's start with the basics. Composition. As you can see, the rule of thirds is almost but not quite being utilized. The subject is positioned in almost the bottom third of the photograph. And as you can see, the broom she is holding, as well as the blue section of the flag, is aligned with the left third of the image. Next, you know I love my weeding lines, and this photograph has 13 of them in the form of the stripes on the flags, as well as the row of stars that are pointing right towards the subject. The lighting is well done considering that this was most likely an impromptu portrait. The lighting is coming from above the subject and at a 45 degree angle to the subject's face. You can see this because of the shadow right here on the wall. As for overall picture quality, the subject is sharp as a tack, while the background is slightly out of focus, which emphasizes the subject of the portrait while keeping the items in the background recognizable, but of slightly less visual importance to the subject. Now let's talk about what really makes this photograph great, the content and the social commentary it evokes. Now many will have noticed the visual similarity to the painting American Gothic, pictured right here, uh, by Grant Wood, which also shares the same name as this photograph. The painting, unlike the photograph, features both a woman and a man with solemn looks on their faces standing in front of a rural home. The man is holding a pitchfork, indicating he is most likely a farmer. Grant Wood painted this in 1930, just 13 years, 14 years before Gordon Park took his photograph. Now, the title American Gothic doesn't refer to our contemporary understanding of the word Gothic, which is people who dress like vampires and listen to the cure. The term Gothic actually refers to architecture, most pointedly Gothic cathedrals which were popular in Europe between the 12th and 16th century. Let's take a look at one. Now, what defines most Gothic cathedrals architecturally is exaggerated vertical proportions, as well as tall arched one windows. As you can see, this one located in France uh, is extremely tall, almost reaching to the heavens. And you can see these arched windows here, as well as these arches as well, 
And this is what defines Gothic architecture opposed to other types of uh, cathedrals like Romanesque, which were popular at the time. Now, going back to the painting, you can see that the house in the background has similar arched windows, which were not common in rural America. You can also see that the figures have extremely exaggerated vertical proportions. You might say they have long faces, both in their expression and in their size. The pitchfork is another example of long verticals. Now, if we compare the painting with the photograph side by side, you will see obvious similarities. The woman's face in the photograph is very similar to the figures in the painting. It is long and tall. The broom mimics the pitchfork the man is holding. The stripes of the flag also add to the exaggerated vertical proportions. But what was Gordon Parks trying to say with this image? Well, the Grant Wood painting, which was made during the height of the Great Depression, was said by critics to be an homage to American Stoicism. A Stoic is one who suffers hardship, but does not complain or show emotion. Stoics were likely an inspiration for Star Trek's Vulcans. The American Stoicism was viewed as admirable. These rural farmers did not cause the Depression. Wall Street, Wall Street greed did. And yet, they persevered with their toil despite the widespread poverty. Now, how much of this is reality is really up to debate, but it was almost certainly a trait admired by many at the time. By appropriating this imagery, Gordon Parks is showing that Stoicism is not at all a purely white American trait. Blacks have been Stoic ever since they were brought to America on slave ships, and they have quietly persevered through far worse hardships and for a much longer time than the rural white Americans suffered during the Depression. And they still suffered hardship now that the Depression was over when this photograph was taken. He is saying if you want a perfect image of American Stoicism, look no further to the American, um, African-American cleaning woman sweeping your floors. And that's what makes this photograph great. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you got something out of it. I know in the last video I promised Ansel Adams next, and we will certainly look at his beautiful landscapes in the next episode. Until then, keep shooting!